B's and G's, welcome back to the Delis drive through confessionals. This is a special 9-4 and 9-5 homework review, and it's about to go down because this is hard stuff. So hopefully I get some, some views and I'm more popular in my own mind tomorrow than I was today. Yes, first question. This is 9-4, number 28. The medians of a right triangle are drawn from the vertices of the acute angles. All right, this is one of those problems where it's so nice to have an inner right board because when I, if I can draw these medians in different colors, it helps keep things straight to us. Okay. All right, one of the medians it says is 2 radical 13 and the other median is radical 73 can you guys confirm that that is correct okay and it asks us to find the length of the hypotenuse of this question this is such a good question so I started out <coughs> since they're medians you know that these two are equal but we do not know that this is x, so we have to call these y. And I started thinking, wow, three variables, this is concerning. But what do I do in math when we're stuck? We move. We just move. You don't just sit there and stare at your paper. So I know that this right here is a right triangle with legs 2x and y. So my first equation is going to be 2x squared plus y squared is equal to, well, that triangle has the green hypotenuse, so radical 73 squared. Does everybody see where I got that from? Okay. And my second equation, then, would be x squared plus 2y squared is equal to what? 2 radical 13 squared. So now you can kind of see why we've been doing the warm-ups. We've struggled with this, so hopefully you've been paying close attention to your warm-up. Okay, this turns into 4x squared plus y squared equals 73. The bottom one turns into x squared plus 4y squared is equal to, well, that's going to be 4 times 13 and that's 52, okay? So we have this equation with two variables, and we have this equation with two variables, and how do you guys suggest that we solve for these? James? Elimination method. Excellent. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation and multiply it by negative 4. Hopefully some of you understand why I chose negative 4. I'd love for it to be all, but I understand that some of you guys are stronger at algebra than others. Seventy-three times four. Can somebody help? Let's see. Two eighty plus twelve, negative two hundred and ninety-two. All right. So now I have two equations. They're true. They're equations. That's what equations mean. It's equals. So I can take those two equations and add them, and the resulting equation will be 2. And that is the elimination method. So look what happens. We get a negative 15x squared. What happens to our y squareds? They're gone. That's the whole point. It's equal to negative 240. Is that right? Can someone do 240 divided by 15? Sixteen x squared is 16. So x would be plus or minus 4. But in this problem, x represents the side of a triangle. Well, actually, half of that. So now to find y, we'll just plug it in. Let's plug it in right here. So we have um, 2 times 4 
squared plus y squared is equal to 73. So that's 8 squared, so 64 plus y squared is 73. Subtract 64 from both sides. y squared is 9. So y is 3, which makes this side what? 6, 8, 10. H is 10, Michael Jackson. He's everywhere, I'm telling you. He's everywhere. Next question. Jan. 9, 4, number 26. The perimeter of an isosceles triangle is 32. The altitude from the vertex is 8. Hold on. And the upper, hold on, now I lost my spot. Okay, good. We're good. Find the length of a leg. So we want to find this. We know the, uh, let me write this down again. This is 9.4, number 26. Okay, so we know it's an isosceles triangle, which makes this side x. How can I write the base now? If I know the perimeter is 32, that was part of the given information. Excellent, Alex. Okay. Now, remember that the altitude of an isosceles triangle is also the what? It's also the median, which makes this 16 minus 1x and 16 minus 1x. This is now geometry and algebra combined, and it'll be this way for the rest of the year. And some of you are going to keep up, and some of you are not. If you're not doing your homework right, you're going to be you're going to find that out really hard on Tuesday. Okay. So now, what do we do, Alex? Excellent. Swaggerian theorem. Okay. 16 minus x squared. Well, I will foil it for you guys because I think many of you are still writing that incorrectly. So you might as well foil it to save the mistake. All right. So 16 squared is 256. Um, minus 16x minus 16x is a negative 32x plus x squared plus 64 equals, sweet, why am I happy? My x squareds are gone. Okay, 64 plus 256 is 320. I move the 32x over, x equals 10. Just saying, 8, 10, 16 minus 10 is 6, Michael Jackson. He everywhere. He everywhere. Okay, next. So, 27. Is this the latter one? This is. These are seriously three of my favorite problems of the year. Okay, so we got a wall. We got a ground. And we got a ladder. The ladder is 25 feet long. It touches 20 feet up on the wall. So now, Michael Jackson, 5 times 5, 4 times 5. So what's this? 3 times 5. You can save a lot of time just by looking for it. See it? OK? Yes? Absolutely. Are you kidding me? You think I'm wasting your time? So now, the ladder moves. It moves such that this length is, well, sorry, this length is twice the length of this new length. That's all we know. Your book gives it to you in letters, but I'm just using my picture. The key to the problem, 
What is this now? Thank you, Van. Now, take a look at this highlighted triangle. I wonder how bad of a teacher I was without the inner right board. I mean, I'm not very good right now, but I don't know how, to, how I would show this to you without an inner right board. Can you see that yellow triangle? Can you get your swagger and theorem on from there? Somebody give it to me. Okay, 15 minus 2x squared plus mm -mm, 20 plus x squared is equal to 25 squared. Yep, 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 yep. Once again, I will foil it for you. Nice. Once again, I'm pumped. Why? Because I don't have to do the quadratic formula. Can I factor this? I just can't factor it in my traditional riddle method. But what does each term contain? So x equals 0 or what? Can x equal 0 in this problem? It cannot. Okay? Uh, from this. What value I put in for x, or when I multiply it by something, it gives me 0. Well, if I put in a 4, I have 5 times 4, which is 20, times 4 minus 4 is 0, and 20 times 0 is 0. So x is 4. What are they asking for in this problem? I think they're asking for this, right? So the answer would be 15 minus 8. The answer is 7. Okay? Lil, or Liv, sorry. I'm sure you could. Did you get it right? Good. This is good stuff. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call on Israel, just because he doesn't ever get to speak up. 9, 5, number 10. Yep. Two things that you guys need to know. This is from 9-2. We've addressed, we skipped 9-2, but we addressed the two or three major facts from that that you needed to know. Here's one. That's called an inscribed angle. If the angle is x degrees, then what's the arc that it intercepts? 2x degrees. This is called a central angle. What's the relationship between this angle and the arc that it intercepts? It's the same. Think about a 90 degree angle in there. Does that angle appear to be a 90 degree angle? What fraction of a circle does this arc represent? A fourth, right? And a fourth of 360 is 90. So they're the same. Does that make sense? Alex? It does not. C correct. Good. I love that answer. So this is um, 9, 5, number 10.
it gives us a picture, okay? It tells us the thing inside of it is a rectangle. And then it asks us, is that a diameter, okay? If you assume this to be a circle, which I think the book wanted you to because it answered the question as yes, then you would do this. That is an inscribed angle. What is the relationship between the angle and the arc that it intercepts? The arc is twice the angle. That makes the arc 180 degrees. And therefore, this is a, a diameter because the yellow arc is a semicircle. That's why it's yes. But at no point did they state that it was a circle. So if you said that it wasn't necessarily a diameter, then you did really good. You read the question, which is the most important thing in this class. Okay? Here's a little side question. Which arc is longer? A 100 degree arc or a 20 degree arc? Which arc is longer? A 100 degree arc or a 20 degree arc? The answer is we don't know. So your hesitation is good. The, the question sounded loaded, right? The, the key is that I said longer. And the length of the arc depends on what? It depends on the radius of the circle. So here, there isn't a 100 degree arc. There's a 20 degree arc. And I'm pretty sure that this one has more length than that one. You understand? OK, next question. Yes, Bryce. Okay, going back to 9.4. Right? And is it? So it's not a right triangle, huh? No, I don't think so. Okay, I love it. This is a great question. I'm going to do it anyway. Okay? It wants us to find this. The, the given information is exactly how it is. So what they're thinking that you'll do is they're thinking that you're going to assume that this is a right triangle with an altitude to the hypotenuse. But it's not labeled a right triangle. So what can we do to check to see if it's a right triangle? Compare 10 squared plus 17 squared to 21 squared. What do you get for this? Is it 389? I can't remember 17 squared. 289, so this is 389, and this is what, 441? So is this a right triangle? It is not. Just out of curiosity, is this too much hypotenuse or not enough hypotenuse? So what kind of triangle is it? It's an obtuse triangle. All right, so there goes part times part stuff. Call that Y. So what's this? And now where are we going? System of equations. Y squared plus X squared is 10 squared. And X squared plus 21 minus Y squared is 17 squared. Let's clean both of these up, OK? So this one is Y squared plus X squared equals 100. 
and this one is x squared plus 441 minus 42y plus y squared. For the record, I know that some of you are floored of how I got that, but I've written out um, FOIL like six times today, so I'm not going to do it anymore. you got to speed up your algebra. And 17 squared, we decided, was 289. All right, so let's combine some things. You get x squared plus y squared minus 42y is equal to, what's 289 minus 441? Somebody help me with that. Negative 152? Somebody check that. Yeah. All right, so now below that, I will rewrite this as x squared plus y squared equals 100, and I'll change them all to negatives. So I just multiply it by negative 1. And now what can I do? I can add them. So I get nice negative 42y equals negative 252. What's 252 divided by 42? Voila. Y is 6. Oh my gosh. There it is again. So what's 8? Sorry. What's X? X is 8. Michael Jackson. He everywhere. Jamin. No, as soon as you do that, this book is cruel. I mean, it could be a lot of things. It could be 10, 3, and radical 91, you know? Don't do it. This book is cruel. As soon as you understand something, they trick you with it. Okay? Lily? The Michael Jackson tri triangle is a family of triangles. Three, four, five. This is the most famous triangle there is, other than maybe 30, 60, 90. Okay? Math books use some variation of this triangle all the time, but they change. So the reason why we call him Michael Jackson is for two reasons. One is that it's very famous, and two, it can make himself look like other things, like white women and all sorts of things. Okay, so it could say 6, 8, 10. It could say radical 3, radical 4, and radical 5. No, that doesn't work. It could say 3 hundredths, 4 hundredths, and 5 hundredths. It can look a lot of different ways, but it's just something that's very convenient. Like, my dad used to build decks, and, like, the way that he would figure out if something was completely level, in addition to using a level, was he would have, let's see, so let's say he wanted to level off this rail to make sure that the angle between the railing and the floor was 90 degrees, okay? He would just take a perfect five-foot string, and measure four feet up on the railing, and then do what? Make sure that that string hit three feet down on the floor. And, it, and if the string didn't reach, if the string stopped short, then what did he just find out? It, this angle was obtuse, and he had to adjust it. And that's how they used to square things off before they had levels. They would just pick an easy Pythagorean triple and check it. Okay? Anything else on this wonderful drive through confessional? Jamin. In order for it to be a right triangle. Okay? So yeah, exactly. And if it's not, then it's not a right triangle, and you have to make adjustments to your railing. So you wouldn't screw in your railing completely until you made those little adjustments. So that's what, like, they're called, like, shivs or shims. You, like, would slide them underneath, and that changes your angle. 
and then you use a a gun and shoot them up. We good? All right, hey, tonight's homework is no easier, so it's time to get working. But more importantly, it's time for you to ask for help when you need it, okay?